In this Debaco University video, we're going to go through a research article that evaluated the optimum post-harvest storage conditions for cannabis terpenes as well as cannabinoids. Now, this is a great research article, however, there is a lot of data presented. So you are encouraged to pause, uh, download the slides, pause the video, look at the original research article. A lot of great information it does get a little complex. Hopefully here, we can break it down for you. All right, let's get into evaluating optimum post-harvest storage conditions uh, of cannabis terpenes and cannabinoids. And as mentioned before, be sure to look at the re original research article presented right here, fairly recent. Um, go through the data, download it, and take a look at it for yourself. A lot of great information here. So first off, let's start with some of the basics. We're looking at decarboxylation and oxidation products of the Delta-9 THCA. So the THCA, oxidation will be converting it to uh, CBNA, and decarboxylation, Delta-9 THC, or if we decarboxylate decarb CBNA, we get uh, CBN here. If we oxidize Delta-9 THC, we also get CBN. So kind of getting into some of the complexities of the chemical pathways here. So let's compare uh, of our phytocannabinoids here, and this is looking at the um, data presented, and it's kind of carries throughout. Uh, CBN in whole and ground samples of type 3 uh, chemovar, which were qualified by UHPLC uh, and UV at four month intervals over the course of a year. So when we see things like T0, T4, T8, and T12, all of those in our data tables that we're going to see correspond with the initial time in four eight and 12 months of storage respectively. So if we go through and we see T0, well, that's the initial point. T4 would be four months, T8 would be eight months, and T12 here would be 12 months or one calendar year. Statistically significant differences were observed in all treatments, temperatures, and time points compared with T0, which is the original point, and we can see that data presented here. And we see the different P levels uh, with the different level of stars or asterisks. Then what we're looking at is whole plant, for THC, Delta-9 THC and CBN, and then ground plant, same thing, Delta-9 THC as well as CBN. And we're noticing overall the general trend here uh, as our, we're looking at for T0, looking at the T0 is that initial, that's why there's only one bar there. And then we see four months, eight months, 12 months, four, eight, 12, four, eight, 12, so on and so forth. We'll notice that this 25 degrees Celsius temperature had the greatest degree of kind of a breakdown there. And the colder temperatures were relatively similar across the board there. And that held, held true both for um, the Delta-9 THC as well as CBD presented here. Now, whole versus ground plant samples, this is one thing that the study did look at. And this comparison of Delta-9 THC and CBN concentrations in whole and ground samples at different storage temperatures for four, eight, and 12 months, data presented here. So again, here's our four months, eight months, and one year later held at the different temperatures. And again, we see relatively similar uh, results here. Uh, kind of the same thing here, and we, but we do notice down here at one year, looking at uh, the Delta-9 THC, the 25 degrees Celsius temperatures seem to have the greatest kind of breakdown evident there. So let's make the cannabinoid uh, comparison here. Comparisons of the full phytocannabinoid, CBN, profiles in whole and ground type 1 and type 3 cannabis inflorescence after one year of storage at different temperatures. The phytocannabinoids were identified and qualified using the uh, very precise methods here at the initial time and after 12 months. Storage, time 0 and T12 respectively. They looked at an N, which is basically about three uh, plant samples here. Absolute concentrations were color-coded relative to the maximum value for each compound that we're gonna see in the next uh, slides. So I'm gonna show some of the data. This is kind of the background to that data because I wanted to have it be on the full slide set. And just as a reminder, as with all the videos in the description, you can find a link to the actual slides as well as citation for all the material and uh, images that are used. This might be a good time to utilize that so you can get this kind of good quality information. And there's a lot going on here. So red and blue arrows indicate decarboxylation and aging pathways respectively. And we're seeing that move through here. So if I kind of like position myself, I have to block some of it sadly. Um, here, we're looking at the aging, the biosynthesis products here. We see the um, different components in whole samples as well as ground samples at different temperatures at uh, 12 months. 
Same thing here, we're looking at um, whole and ground plant samples, and then we have our kind of aging that occurs in decarboxylation that occurs acids uh, to neutrals there. We're seeing the darker colors, or darker, I should say, uh, box highlights represent more the maximum, and the white uh, or lighter coloration showing where the breakdown is occurring. So I'm gonna kinda kinda move myself kind of off off to the side up here, I should say. Welcome to pause the video uh, and take a look at this. Again, remember this is looking at the uh, Delta 9 THC. The next one we're gonna look at is at the, um, at the CBD levels, same information presented. So here are THC, now here is the CBD. Blue and arrow, blue, uh, red and blue arrows indicate decarboxylation and aging pathways respectively again. And we're seeing basically the same kind of breakdown um, or same way that the data is presented. Don't worry, I'll get to some general conclusions here. But let me move myself again so you can kind of get an idea of the full data set. That's what I like about these scientific studies. They present you with a lot of information, a lot of detail, uh, but some people don't really want to be interested in all the details, want the bigger picture, but I want to provide you with this. So look at the general terpene comparisons. So comparisons here, looking at um, just two uh, terpene concentrations. Again, looking at the different temperatures, time zero here when they initially harvest, and then whole plants and ground plant samples at the different temperatures for our different terpenes. Um, so important just to keep in mind that definitely we're noticing here the initial was definitely higher. We had degradation um, at all of these um, intervals here at all these different um, temperatures. So again, just important to keep that in mind we're looking at basically time zero and then four month uh, storage uh, for a duration of time. Now, as terpene profiles, so we see kind of the same thing here. The maximum are 100%, and then what they kind of uh, broke down to, their respective terpene profiles. Comparison of, the, of terpene profiles in the whole and ground type 3 cannabis inflorescence after four months of storage, T4, at different temperatures. Absolute concentrations were color-coded relative to the maximum value of each compound. So again, here's time zero, considered to be the maximum. We can see they all had a degree of breakdown. Darker colorations are representing where the breakdown was slower, and the lighter colorations indicate a more um, negative or a greater degree of breakdown. Just for a quick example here, if we're looking at here, looking at 99, here we broke down to like 22%. It's like 22% of what originally it started with, just to give you a general idea. Good to kind of use that number. Again, welcome to pause, look at the data here at the different terpene profiles. Looking at cannabinoids in solvents, so they also looked at cannabinoids and how to store these. Uh, DMSO, a very common solvent used in scientific laboratories, ethanol and olive oil. And we'll notice that there is definitely this kind of change at these different temperatures at time zero, uh, T6 and T12. So it'd be six months and then a year. And what we generally notice, to kind of give you the general take-home message, message in both THC and CBD, for the most part, the olive oil seem to have the least amount of breakdown compared to DMSO or ethanol. Very important for those looking at studying these in labs, because a lot of times DMSO is the lab standard. We can see that there was a fair amount, greater amount of breakdown, particularly at 25 degrees Celsius. So with the general conclusions, hopefully all that data didn't scare you off and you're still here watching the video. Uh, but for phytocannabinoids and cannabis, inflorescence are more stable during storage compared with extracts under similar conditions. Uh, terpenoid concentrations were found to decrease rapidly under all storage conditions, but temperatures lower than negative 20 degrees Celsius in grinding of the inflorescence were the least favorable conditions. So this is what should be avoided if you're looking for long-term storage and preservation of uh, terpenes. Olive oil was found to be the best vehicle for preserving the natural phytocannabinoid composition of the extracts. So kind of an important note right there. So lastly, uh, the best preservation con conditions would be storage of the whole inflorescence and extracts dissolved in olive oil at 4 degrees Celsius were the optimum post-harvest conditions for cannabis. So we take all that, quote, confusing information, and here's our quick little general summary here. Um, but as always, scientific studies can be great to investigate and look at the details. Welcome to go back, take a look at those, pause some of those, look in the description, download the videos, download the slides, take a look at it for yourself. But if you want that quick storage uh, conditions based on all that data presented, this is your quick little summary here. And hopefully you found the scientific study interesting and it will help you better store and maintain uh, the conditions and preservation of the important cannabinoids and terpenes within your cannabis plants.